Our relationship with God is more, than spir more important than spiritual gifts. Now, there are many people who, who uh, treasure spiritual gifts uh, strongly. They think that spiritual gifts are very, you know, are what they look for. Actually, what we look for is God. And when we have God, He will give us spiritual gifts. That's a story for our ministry. So, we should hunger for, hunger for God and then hunger to serve God and love God. Then He will give us the spiritual gifts necessary. And uh, so the priority is very important. I, I know that there are many people who go to different meetings, different kinds of meetings, and they just want the anointing. They want to receive prophetic gifts or gifts to heal people. Actually, all of these will come when we have a strong relationship with God. According to God's will, God has a will for each person. Uh, each person will receive different gifts. Not everyone will receive the same gifts. So please don't despise uh, other gifts. Some people with prophetic gifts, they think that uh, they think that uh, that's the most important gift. There is no most important gift. Of course, it's more important to build up the church, to build up Christians. That's most important. But we don't have to say um, some gifts are stronger than others because in the body of Christ, every gift is necessary. Okay, now, first point is God gladly gives us spiritual gifts. God gladly, uh, He's very happy to give us spiritual gifts. In Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will dry, uh, take up serpents, and if they drink any de anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So here in this passage we see that these signs will follow those who believe. So all those who believe uh, will receive these signs, these miracles. Everyone who believes in Jesus will receive the miracles. And in my name, they will cast out demons. So every Christian has the authority to uh, drive out demons and to lay hand on the sick and they will re recover. Now, when we lay hand on people, not only will the sick recover, but also uh, people will experience the presence of God. Now, to me, the laying on of hands is not just for healing. It's for building up a strong relationship with God that people can experience the Holy Spirit. They can experience His joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. And this would motivate people to have a stronger relationship with God. And, uh, and this would transform their spiritual life. And also when they lay hands on other people, they can help other people to experience the Holy Spirit. So that's, to me, very important gift that any Christian can have. Here it says that, uh, Jesus said that the signs will follow those who believe. And in my name, they'll cast out demons. That means every Christian can, dr uh, drive out, uh, can drive out demons. And also, uh, we can lay hand on the sick and they will recover. So every Christian has that authority to do that. Although some people will have a stronger anointing of casting out demons or laying on the sick to be healed. Uh, so some Christians have a stronger anointing, but everyone can exercise this gift and this authority to drive out demons and to lay hand on the sick for healing. And Jesus has victory and gladly gives us spiritual gifts. Ephesians 4, 8. When He ascended on high, He led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So when Jesus ascended on high, He gave uh, he captive uh, the, uh, all the gifts. Uh, he captured all the gifts. And then He gave gifts to all people. 
uh, that he, you know, he, all the enemies are under his captive, and then he is free to give gifts, uh, spiritual gifts to men. So he gladly gives the gifts. He, it's his plan to give the spiritual gifts. And 1 Corinthians 12, 8 on talks about the different spiritual gifts we can have. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Okay, someone asked me to contact someone else, please do it yourself because I cannot, I'm broadcasting, I cannot send messages. Okay, so please, uh, for any communication, please tell the other people. Okay, now so the Holy Spirit will give us the word of wisdom that He will give us uh, words of wisdom that we can say to people to uh, give them uh, wisdom and also that our words will have wisdom how to handle certain problems, how to raise up people and another words of knowledge, he will give us knowledge of words of knowledge of what we might not know uh, that means uh, it now it could be knowledge of spiritual things it could be knowledge of God, it could be knowledge of people, some people, what they need, uh, what they need and what their problems are. And then faith, that He can give us the faith, that, that the faith to move mountains, to do the impossible by the power of God. It's God who does the things, not us, not faith. Faith cannot do anything. Faith holds on to God and God can do wonderful things. And then gifts of healing, that He can give us the gifts of healing. And some people have strong anointing of healing. And then working on miracles. Uh, the miracles include different kind of miracles, not just healing. And, and then prophecy, that we can prophesy in uh, Jesus' name. Uh, now, I have seen a lot of abuse of this. There are many people who say things by themselves and they say that they are prophecies and many of these don't come true. So we must be very careful to examine. In the Old Testament when people give any false prophecies they will be put to death. So in the New Testament too we should be very careful that it must come from God before we will declare that is from the Lord. So we must be very careful to use this spiritual gift and I've seen people who use this spiritual gift in a very loose way. Um, they just say, you know, I have seen prophecies like this, okay? This year God is going to bless you. God is going to uh, give, do great things among you and uh, uh, provide you uh, with money, provide you with your needs. Now. This is not from the Bible. The Bible says when people seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to them. It's when people seek God and then they will receive this. But some people, they claim to be prophets and they just say, okay, everyone in this church this year you'll receive a lot of money. That is not from God because God's message will align with, will align with, um, uh, the Bible, that, that every prophecy will align with the Bible, that the Bible does say that God blesses those who seek the kingdom of God and seek His righteousness to love God and obey God, not to anyone and not to any Christian. Now any Christian will receive certain, certain blessings, but um, the majority of blessings are from, you know, are for Christians who love God and and uh, 
seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay? So the gift of faith and then healing and then miracles and prophecy and discerning of spirits that they can discern the spirit in a person or discern evil spirit and different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Uh, now, in book of Acts chapter 2, uh, when the Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke languages of different people in the world. And some people think these are the only kinds of tongues. Now, if those are the only kinds of tongues, they don't need interpretation because there will be some people who understand them. So, in, uh, when the Bible says that there will be interpretation of tongues, that means this are something that people don't understand. And in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it talks about that they will be speaking the mysteries of God. So, these are mysteries of God, not just uh, declaring the gospel to, to some people, but rather speaking in tongue can be declaring uh, mysteries of God and its special language of God that needs interpretation. Okay, being filled with the Holy Spirit means now we, the infilling of the Holy Spirit will bring stronger spiritual gifts. Uh, since I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I have much motivation to handle my sins and also how to handle my problems in my life and then uh, God gave me a lot of good teachings how to raise up people's spiritual life and how to pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and to be changed in their life and drive out demons. I experienced all this after I experienced the Holy Spirit. So I, uh, and then in the previous passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it's, it's all these are given by the Holy Spirit through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit that we can receive all these spiritual gifts. So, so in order to have stronger spiritual gifts, it's important for us to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit means having a very intimate relationship with God. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, some people misunderstand that, that, uh, that to mean necessarily some uh, special experiences. Now, those special experiences could be filled a feeling of the Holy Spirit. But some people who don't have this, inf uh, this experiences, but they have a very super strong intimate relationship with God. They can be filled with the Holy Spirit also. So it's a degree. How strong are we filled with the Holy Spirit? The stronger we are, the more we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And being filled, now some people also mix up being filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, and experiencing the Holy Spirit. You know, some people go to a meeting and then they, someone lay hand on them and they experience power and love or fall down and then they think they are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not necessarily true. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a continuous thing. It's not just a one-time thing. So people who have this continuous infilling of the Holy Spirit, they must turn away from sins. Now, if people don't turn away from sins, they continue to commit sins, and then they have this experience, they, you know, sooner or later, they can be attacked by evil spirit. And evil spirit can enter their life. So, it's important for us to turn away from all sins so that we don't give the devil footholds. So, we must understand that. It's very important to turn away from sins. And then, and the way, the key to turn away from sins is to hate sin, knowing, knowing that sins will um, give the devil a foothold and it will bring destruction to our life. Uh, so we s realize that to continue to commit sins means we will, you know, it's like throwing away the blessings of God, throwing away the wonderful plan of God. So we want to turn away from any sins because sins are very destructive. And following God's will and the Great Commission, because in filling the Holy Spirit, it's not just for enjoyment. It's for obeying God 
and especially the Great Commission to preach the gospel and also to teach people to obey everything Jesus has taught us and baptizing them. So following the Great Commission is our goal. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just for enjoyment or for earning money. Now, some people want to have uh, the prophetic gifts and then they can make a lot of money. That's not the goal of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is for bless, blessing other people, for glorifying God, to live a life according to God's plan, and dedicating our lives to God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, people who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit would dedicate our life to God, and doing things for God's glory and not our own glory to serve Him. So, uh, so to, to serve God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit means having a deep... Uh, intimate relationship with God and turn away from sins and obey God and follow God's will, especially the Great Commission and dedicate our lives to God and doing things for God's glory and not our own glory. And this, are serving, this is serving God. Necessary, not necessarily having a position of, of serving God in a church, but we'll be serving God anytime uh, with our words, with our action, with our life. Of course, these people would want to, many of them would want to serve God also in the church. God's will is that all Christians will be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive supernatural gifts. So this is God's will. Uh, everyone that will receive supernatural spiritual gifts. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So here, God said that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Of course, this means all Christians. He won't pour his spirit on non-Christians. That he will pour out his spirit on all Christians. And then, uh, what are the signs that they, uh, you know, what are some of the fruits uh, the results when they have the Holy Spirit pour upon them. Then your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. So these are all supernatural gifts. We notice that like um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about like healing and tongues and miracles, uh, prophetic gifts, are all supernatural gifts. Now, the Holy Spirit does give the so-called not so nat uh, natural supernatural gifts like preaching, leading worship, counseling, administration, uh, that kind of gifts. But the, the Bible does list a lot of time mostly supernatural spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit. And here too are three uh, supernatural gifts. Prophesy. To say things that they don't normally know is something that God revealed to them. And then to see visions, that God shows them visions, and to dream dreams. This is similar to seeing visions, but seeing visions can be in the daytime or in the prayer. But dream dreams will be when we are sleeping. So these are uh, spiritual gifts that involve revelation. Not necessarily revelation of, you know, not necessarily revelation of new truth. Some people say, are you adding to the Bible? This is not necessarily adding to new truth, but applying the same truth as in the Bible. For instance, the Bible calls us to obey God and serve God and uh, you know, call people to serve God. And then the prophetic gifts will say, this certain person is called by God. And God has called you to go to somewhere in the world uh, to do mission work. So this is not any extra revelation of the Bible, but rather application of the Bible that God calls certain people to serve God. Or God calls certain people to do evangelism to a certain person. So many people, they receive prophetic gifts that they, you know, they are called to do evangelism. And prophetic gifts can be also giving teachings of God, that God has given me, 
these teachings and to many people the gifts of teaching to help people to be raised up to be used by God. So those things I don't nat I naturally know, but God uh, revealed to me, guide me to understand God's truth. And so this, those involve revelation, not of, new, not of new truth, but of application of the same truth as in the Bible. B, each person has different spiritual gifts. We should work together with other Christians to build up the church. That's very important. Christians should have a heart of unity. It's sad to see that many churches are not united. Now, when we talk about unity, some people talk about you know unity with uh, uh, churches with uh, new theology that uh, the theology that doesn't believe in supernatural. Now that's not what I mean. What I mean is that all churches who trust in Jesus to be their savior and want to obey and follow the Bible are Christian churches and there should be unity. But it's very sad to see that uh, because many groups don't believe in the uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit and many groups, you know, even if they are filled with the Holy Spirit or not filled with the Holy Spirit, they have teachings that are not from the Bible. And that's how many people attack the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We see a lot of those on on the internet that there are people who preach like for instance the prosperity gospel which is not in the Bible and and they call themselves prophets now the prosperity uh, gospel is something like this that when a person really obey God and serve God that he will have a lot of money and prosperity there is no way that he will suffer poverty that he will have uh, prosperity in every area. And also when people give money for offering, they can expect to get money back. Now, the Bible does promise us when we obey God and love God and serve God, God will bless us in this life and in the future. And then also when we offer our tithe, that he will open the window in heaven and pour out blessings upon us that the Bible does promise that but the point is the motivation of offering should be to glorify God and respond to God's blessings and his love respond to God's person it's not to get money back you know some people will say okay you give a large amount of money and then you'll get another larger amount back that is not a motivation to give offering so it's very important that we don't, you know, uh, some people just, uh, they have teachings that are not from the Bible and they think they have spiritual gifts or prophecy. It's very important that we really follow the Bible. Now, the Bible does talk about when we love God and obey God, that He will bless us. Now, what are God's blessing? His blessing would be to give us peace and joy and love and strength and uh, that our life will be filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit and fruit, filled with uh, the motivation to love God and serve God and have the anointing to, uh, to serve God and bless people. And God will provide for him, not necessarily to become a rich person, but God will provide sufficiently for him so that he has money to serve God. So, so uh, that he will be able to follow God's will. It doesn't necessarily mean that his whole lifetime he will be constantly having a lot of income. It's not necessarily that. You know, the income could come. Uh, some people, you know, the income doesn't come constantly. But they trust in God. God's money will come in the right time. So the goal of uh, following, you know, the goal when we serve God and love God is not for money. It's for glorifying God. At the same time, we trust in God's provision. But we don't think of, you know, I'll get rich, I'll get a lot of money back. So, I, uh, so this prosperity, gospel, and other, and other teachings that are not from the Bible. So we, we, uh, I encourage you all to be 
very careful to discern teachings to discern prophets don't just think every prophet is correct they're not all correct i've seen many problematic prophets and then we should all work together now the reason why some churches they don't accept the infilling holy spirit is because of these practices and they say like the prosperity gospel and also wrong prophecies of some people and they say okay these people are not following god and that causes the splitting of the churches if all churches follow the bible and and want to be filled with the holy spirit and want a intimate relationship with god and then we should all be united that we don't have any teaching outside of the bible every teaching should be from the bible then we will not have this problem and but i pray that as much as possible we'll have unity with uh, churches that believe in jesus salvation and believe uh, the bible is god's word okay and god gives gifts to each person according to his will and plan so god has a will and a plan for each person first corinthians 12 11 but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills it's god's will god's will to give to each person according to his will now then is it right for us to ask for spiritual gifts it's right and when it's God's will, He will give you that special gifts. Now, some people, they want to be like someone else. They see a prophet, they say, I want to have this spiritual gift of prophecy. And they keep asking, I want this gift of prophecy. Now, if it is not God's will, He won't have a strong gift of prophecy. Now, everyone has the gift of prophecy that God will speak to them in some way. But each person to a certain degree, some, you know, when we receive teachings, that's also prophecy. Receive guidance from the Holy Spirit, that's also prophecy. But some people receive strong anointing of the of prophecy, and it's something God has planned for some people. And we can find that out when we, you know, after we experience the Holy Spirit, we, we love God more and be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then God will give us spiritual gifts uh, by Himself. When we love God more, He will give spiritual gifts to us by Himself uh, automatically. After I experience the Holy Spirit, a few days after that, I lay hand on people and people experience the Holy Spirit. So God gave that to me immediately. So we can, when we seek God, He will give us the spiritual gifts. But of course, we can ask. We can ask, Lord, please help me. T please give me uh, more spiritual gifts for your ministry. But I see more it's in a problem of the life of the person that, uh, that they need to handle the problems of the, in the life, then they can receive more spiritual gifts. When they have an intimate relationship with God, when they take care of their sins, and when they have peace and joy and love for people, when they have love for people and when they have compassion, then they will have more spiritual gifts of compassion, of how to care for people, how to do evangelism, how to help people spiritually, how to serve God, how to build up the churches. He will receive spiritual gifts like that. And spiritual gifts are for building the church, not for money. But some people think of, if I get this spiritual gift, I'll be, I'll be famous and I will make a lot of money. That's not our goal. The goal is to build up the body of Christ to follow God's will. So I hope that we see that God's will is always to help, to help people to follow His perfect will. It's not just to build up someone so that he says, oh, I'm so powerful, I'm so filled with spiritual gifts. There are so many people who serve God and then they have spiritual gifts and then they become proud and that's not what God wants. And then they are doing in doing a serving God in vain because it will be, you know, all this when he is building up on the foundation of Jesus Christ to serve God. And then he has pride. He's tearing everything down. Okay, different Christians have different gifts. Each person is important in God's kingdom. So we all have different gifts. And each person is different. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 16. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. So is it, uh, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. So Paul here is using the analogy of the body parts. Actually, in the kingdom of God, we are all like body parts. All the body parts function together to build up the church, to build up the body of Christ. So if the ears say, say because I'm not an eye, I, I don't belong to the body, I'm not of the body, then you know, we know that that's not true. And what will it do? Then the ear will lose its sense of mission. Then it, the, the ear will say, I'm useless, and he might give up. He doesn't treasure himself. He's not happy because of himself. So we should all be happy, no matter how humble a position we have in the kingdom of God. Uh, even when we are the one who, you know, do physical work in a church to clean the church, to, uh, to build up, you know, the, like the, the, uh, to repair the church building and, and different more basic work. We don't regard that as unimportant. Everybody is important. And when we serve God with joy, then God is happy. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, the people who built up the temple of God was honored by God and filled with the Holy Spirit so that they received the gifts to serve God. Okay, and then, so if the whole body were, were an eye, where would be the hearing? So if everyone is a prophet, so where are the preachers and the teachers and the evangelists? So we all need to have different gifts. And there are some people who, who says to me, you have to seek the gift of prophecy. I say, you know, if God wants me to have that gift, He will give it to me. But I seek God. And he will give it to me. I did ask for uh, the gift of prophecy as strong as some people, but he hasn't given it to me. And I just accept that. And I still hunger for the gift of prophecy, but I won't, you know, say, keep saying to God, please give it to me, please give it to me. Because we don't have to think that God is mean. God is not mean. We don't have to say, God is mean, so I have to change you so that you won't be so mean. God is not mean. God is generous. God is happy to give us the spiritual gifts necessary. So He gives to each person according to His will. So I believe that He has His plan. When we love Him and follow Him, He will naturally give us the spiritual gifts necessary for us. So the eye, and also the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. So no body parts can say to another body part, I don't need you. So everyone needs each other. We need each other. We build up each other. And I'm sad to see that many churches say to, to the Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, say, I don't need you. And the Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit say to those who are not, say, I don't need you. We, don't, we need each other. I hope there will be a unity of the Christians uh, that will come sooner than the Great Tribulation. In the Great Tribulation, I... I believe there will be more unity, but it's hard to hold the unity. Maybe sometimes it's just a few Christians hiding together and then they can have a strong relationship with God and then they can um, have the strength from the Lord. But so I hope it's, you know, we don't have to wait until that time in order to receive that, um, in order to receive that spiritual gifts, that, that unity. I hope we all can have that unity sooner than that when we all treasure each other. And I hope that we can all examine the Bible objectively. You know, on both sides, the Christians who say that there are no more Christian uh, spiritual gifts, no more speaking in tongues, no more miracles, no more prophecy. At the same time, there are Christians who say that, yes, from the Bible there are prophecies and there are miracles. Now, both sides claim to explain the Bible. The Bible will only have one answer. So we need to examine the Bible objectively and say, 
what does the Bible really say? What does the Bible really say? And in, on the internet, there, there's a lot of discussion about this, about different issues. So we can examine those and then find the truth for ourselves and for our followers. So I hope we all will say, hopefully we all follow the truth and then we can treasure each other and build up the body of Christ. Even if we have differences, we still treasure each other. But we want to find out the truth. What is the truth? We should be happy if another Christian is honored. Now this is very important. If someone has strong spiritual gifts, we should be happy and say, happy for them and say, I'm, thank, I, I'm thankful that you are so filled with the gift of prophecy, of preaching, of teaching, of administration. I'm so happy. Instead of being jealous. Now some people, they are jealous. They, they say, I pray so much for prophecy and I don't get it. I pray so much for miracles and I don't get it. And you have it. It's unfair. It's unfair. Now this is not the right spirit. When people have that kind of spirit, they won't receive great spiritual gifts from God. But when we love God and we honor God and we respect other people and we are humble and we want to serve people, then God will pour spiritual gifts into our life. I thank God that God has given me many spiritual gifts. The greatest, I think, is teaching and uh, have, having different teachings to encourage people and to live in the love of God and to live a joyful, burden-free Christian life and also to pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, to raise up people to serve God. And uh, also, he, He's given me the gifts of preaching, the gifts of uh, playing music and leading worship and leading people into a strong presence of God to enjoy God. Hallelujah! God, you are so wonderful! Hallelujah! And the gift of counseling and helping people and... and uh, of training people. I thank God for all this and I hope you will hunger for God and then God will give to you according to His will. We don't, we don't say, I want to have His gifts. Now you can ask for it. If God doesn't give it to you, you know, you don't have to pray for it many times a day. You just ask God. He knows it. When, you, when it's the right time, He can give it to you if it is God's will. Now sometimes it also needs us to uh, to practice. Some people say, I want the gift of, of miracles, but they don't pray for people. When they see a sick person, they dare not pray for people. Then they don't have the, the gift of miracles. And some people say, well, if I pray for someone, immediately he will get healed, and then I know that I have this gift. Now, everyone who has the gift of healing don't see everyone healed. I haven't seen any, any person who has the gift of healing that when they pray for people, everyone is healed. One time I heard a message of Randy Clark, and he said that he has prayed for many people, and many people are healed, and many people experience the Holy Spirit. But he has prayed for some people, and he really wants those people healed, but those people were not healed. And he said he could not understand why, and he just accepted that, accept that fact. Not everyone he prays for will be healed. So even him will admit that not everyone he prays for will be healed. So we too, we don't have to say, you know, everyone has to be healed. They have, a, have to have a supernatural healing before I, I believe that I have this spiritual gift. And then they, then they are putting the pride in the first place. I want to be honored by people, respected by people because I have this special gift of healing. You know, we all can pray humbly and say, Lord, we pray for the healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Actually, a lot of time when I pray for healing, I just love God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You love us all. We want to enjoy you. Thank you, Jesus. We can enjoy you. Come, fill our, Holy, fill, fill our spirit. Change our life. Fill, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Change our life so that we can experience you more and bring healing, please, Lord Jesus, bring healing. So a lot of time I pray more for relationship with God, and then I will also pray for healing. Sometimes I didn't pray for healing, and healing came. The first time I had healing, 
I did not pray for healing at all. I prayed for a group of people. When I first experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed for a group of people. I never mentioned healing. And I asked them, did you experience anything? And a woman jumped up and said, my shoulder ache is healed. I had shoulder ache and now I'm healed. And then a woman jumped up and said, my hip, my backache, I'm sorry, my backache is healed. Now I don't have the backache. And the person had evil spirit being driven out. So that was the first time I prayed for a group of people and I, I never expected that. And so God can give that to us. So I hope that, you know, um, when we see other people have spiritual gifts, we honor them, we respect them, and we thank God for them. And whatever we have, we thank God for what we have. We don't have to say, why don't I have other gifts? Okay, so 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So if one member suffer, then we suffer together. And if one member is honored, then all the members rejoice with it. So if a person is honored that he has special spiritual gifts, then we thank God for that person, we honor God for that person, and we honor that person. We should be happy if a Christian is blessed by God and has strong spiritual gifts that we don't have. Even if we don't have it, we still thank God for the spiritual gifts given to a person. Okay, it's very important that we set the priority right. Priority in life. First, to build a strong relationship with God. That is the number one. Now, some people put spiritual gifts first. That's not the right priority. The first priority is always to have a good relationship with God. That I love God, I honor God, I follow God, I obey God, and I serve God. And then bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, some people hunger for spiritual gifts more than the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is essential. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. These are essential to our spiritual life. These are more important than, than uh, spiritual gifts. And then three, love and bless people. So it's for people. Always want to bless people, help people, love people, and fulfill our different responsibilities that we want to fulfill our responsibility at home, in the place of work, in the church, and then serve God in our life and our ministry, that we serve God. So those are the priority of God. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for diff these different functions so that we can carry out these functions well. How to discover our spiritual gifts? We can start with things we naturally want to do. So everyone is born with some natural tendencies. Some people have mystical sense, then they can seek whether they want to develop the musical sense. Some people want to care for people or share what God has done in their lives or to do evangelism or share God's messages. So everyone has different tendency. When we have these tendencies, then we want to uh, develop those first. We want to try to do those first. And when we do those things, God will give us spiritual gifts. God, God will guide us how to do it better. When I first believe in Jesus, my first tendency is to tell people that God is real. There is a real God. There is really heaven and hell. And I encourage people to believe in Jesus. And that's my first natural uh, tendency is to evangelize and share what God has done in my life and share God's blessings, His salvation. So that's my first natural tendency. And then I went to church and I started to wonder whether other Christians really strongly believe in Jesus and whether they are following God. And then I noticed, when I talked to them, I noticed that some of them are not sure that God is real. They're not sure about the relationship with God. So I spent time uh, I, I had a plan to go to church earlier than usual to talk to the people and to help understand, to understand how they are and help them spiritually. And then I also leave church later and stay with them. And then sometimes I even walk home with them and talk with them on the way 
So that's another natural tendency God gave me to help people spiritually. And then soon after that, uh, I have this motivation from my heart. I want to serve God. If God, it is your will, I want to be a pastor. And, and that was the next thing that happened to me. But it took years because it, it took a long time for the education. And then later I became a pastor. And then after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then I noticed that when I pray for people, they can experience the healing of God and the uh, transformation of their life and also evil spirit being driven out. Then I start doing those things and I found that now I can do greater things in God and the spiritual gifts are much stronger. And then I train other Christians to do that and they, f and they found that they can do similar things to many Christians because every Christian has authority to drive out demons and lay hand on, on people. And if they have a clean life, now it's very important if they have a clean life. If they have evil spirit, they should not lay hand on people. But if they have a clean life and they have a close relationship with God, they can have confidence to lay hand on people, but not to push people to fall down. It doesn't make sense. If we want to bless people, we want them to experience the Holy Spirit, not to push people down. But some people, they want to make people think they have a strong anointing and they just lay on people and they push the head, push the head, push the head back. I've seen people, they just keep pushing, keep pushing. That doesn't glorify God. So I hope we all stop doing that. And, uh, and then when we lay hands on people, just touch and help the person to love God. It's very important. Always turn the eyes on God. Now, I've noticed some people, they, they uh, lay hands on people, they will cry out something like this, fire, power. It's just for power of fire. We want a relationship with God. So when I lay hands on people, I'll say, Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, and you're loving us right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to build up an intimate relationship with God. And God's power and His fire will come. He will come. The Holy Spirit will come. So we don't have to push things done a certain way. There are too many people, they have the pride in them. They want to be honored by other people. They want a special position in the church or in the churches. And they do things that are very strange. I heard that even some people use witchcraft they pray for the power of witchcraft when they lay hands on people. And that's totally against the will of God. And that would not only tear down their ministry, they would tear down their spiritual life and their eternal life. So I hope that we all understand that it's more important to love God than to have spiritual gifts. And the spiritual gifts are to glorify God and to build up people. Okay, steps to discover our spiritual gifts. First, love God and have a close relationship with God. That's the most essential. Always have time for God. Love God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. I love you. I honor you. I want to follow you. I want to glorify you. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the more we pray from the Spirit, cry out from the Spirit. Jesus said, worship in spirit and in truth. So cry out in the Spirit. The Spirit will include our soul and our spirit. So includes our mind, our will, and our feelings. So first, we, the whole mind agrees with the Bible and agrees with God. And then the will, I, I make up my mind to follow God. And, and the feelings, I feel good about God, I like God, I enjoy God. So when we first start praying and say, yes, I agree with God, the mind and the will, I want to give my life to God and my feelings toward God. I like God, I enjoy God, I delight in God. And then the whole spirit, from the whole spirit, cry out to God, ah, hallelujah. <laughs> it's like the whole spirit cry out to God, <laughs> hallelujah. Now since I experience the joy of the Lord, whenever I cry out from my whole spirit, immediately I have the joy flowing out, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then the joy will just flow out and power will also flow through me. Power will just 
flow through my body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. And the love of God and the motivation of God will come to me. So it's very important to be filled with the Holy Spirit and obey God's Word and obey the Bible. There are many people who create their own doctrines. We must be humble to examine the teachings of the churches because you know, the church, the tradition of the church, they have, you know, the, a long history of relationship with God. There are many reasons of these doctrines. So we have to examine these doctrines. If they are biblical, we wa want to follow them. We want to obey the Bible, obey God's Word, obey the doctrines in the Bible. Now, some people despise doctrines. They say, I don't want any doctrine. I just want the Holy Spirit to talk to me. Now, the Holy Spirit talks to us first through the Bible, not first through our encounter. Because some people, because of their sins, sometimes they don't necessarily hear from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they could hear from evil spirit or from themselves. Now, there are people who train other people to prophesy like this. Okay, do you want to bless someone? Just say it out. And then they say this is prophecy. Now, it's not necessary prophecy when you want to bless someone. It could be from our mind. And for some people, sometimes when it says things that could be from the devil. So we don't want to, you know, uplift ourselves. We just, you know, want to obey God's word and examine, do Bible study. Study, examine the Bible passages. Uh, now I will, after I talk through the main teachings and training, I will go through Bible study. Uh, how to examine the Bible, uh, the God's nature, uh, Bible study method and preaching method. I will go through that. And so there's a lot of training I keep giving. And then have compassion of people. Spiritual gifts are for blessing people, helping people, and receive training on spiritual gifts. Now we want to know who we receive from. There are people who, who uh, they teach on spiritual gifts, and their teaching is not biblical. They just force people, push people. For instance, some people tell people try to speak in tongue. Now that is not biblical. Speaking in tongue comes from God, comes from the Holy Spirit. We notice that in the Bible, when people speak in tongue, they just start to speak in tongue naturally. Paul and Peter never told them start speaking in tongue. Try to imitate me. He never. They never said that. And, and when people try to imitate other Christians or try to make sounds by themselves, they are not necessarily speaking in tongues. So I hope that we don't do things like that. That's not from the Bible. You know, just trying to make some sound doesn't necessarily lift up their spiritual life. And speaking in tongues is not the most important thing in being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, to me, it's most important is the strong relationship with God, to love God, to honor God, to believe in God, and then also to experience the work of God in His love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, His compassion coming to us. I think those are more important than speaking in tongues. Now, speaking in tongues is important for us to, to be connected to God and to be more sensitive to the spiritual things and perhaps to receive uh, uh, prophetic gifts for some people. Uh, it's not necessary, you know, um, now the Bible does talk about that the, those who speak in tongues will benefit themselves. But the Bible doesn't say that. Speaking in tongues is the only way to build up yourself. There are many ways to build up ourselves. The relationship with God it's the main way to build up our spiritual uh, life with God and to be filled with the Holy Spirit and obey God's Word and, and obey, and obey uh, to have compassion on people and love people. These are important things. So spirit, uh, speaking in tongues is not the only key to a strong relationship to, with God and also it's not the only key to speaking in tongues or prophecy. Uh, sp Speaking in tongues is not the key to prophecy. It can be one key. It can be one key, but not the only key. The Bible actually doesn't say that speaking in tongues will lead to prophecy.
but speaking in tongues will speak the mysteries of God. So it can open a person to the mysteries of God, uh, to a certain revelation of God. So that's one way. But it's more important to, be, to love God, and then God can speak to us more, and to treasure God's Word, and treasure God Himself, and God will speak to us more. So what I mean is, have a wholesome Christian doctrine. It's not just one area. And I've seen people who just speak in town without loving God. They just, they just, they don't concentrate in the prayer. They just walking around speaking in town, and they think that that's, you know, that's how they relate to God. Now, when we speak in town, we want to think about God also, but we don't think in a comp complicated way. We just think of loving God, or serving God, honoring God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And receive training on spiritual gifts. So we, we have to watch whom we receive from. Now, I do speak in tongue, but I don't speak in tongue in public because the Bible says that that's for edifying of oneself. And when I, uh, it was one time in a, a meeting a pastor came from Indonesia to Hong Kong and then he told one person to speak in tongue. I was standing behind the pastor. The moment he said that, my tongue started to vibrate. And that's how my speaking in tongue began. It just came naturally. So I hope that we all, you know, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and be guided by the Holy Spirit and not to push our ways and not to push for our own uh, benefit or uplifting okay and then receive training and then practice helping people so when we think that we have this uh, gift we can tell the pastor and then ask for permission how to help other people uh, how to uh, use these spiritual gifts and operate in spiritual gifts so we operate in a spiritual gift and seek God's strategy in our life that God's strategy may be to use us in ministry or to use us to, to bless people, to help people, so we seek these ways. So first, to, to discover a spiritual gift, to love God and have a close relationship with Him, be filled with the Holy Spirit, obey God's Word and study God's Word and have compassion on people and receive training on spiritual gifts from godly people, from people who teach the Bible, and practice helping people, and operate in spiritual gifts. Now, I want to share, uh, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I attended some Spirit-filled meetings, and I saw how the pastors led the people to experience the Holy Spirit. I learned from them, but I don't do the same way as they do. I, I change it to a way it's like saying, Oh God, I love you. I thank you. Jesus, I love you. As I study the Bible, I see that the most the great the first the greatest and the first commandment is to love God. So I believe that after experience the Holy Spirit, the infilling Holy Spirit is to help us love God and to help us live out the, the love of God and to bless other people, to serve God. So I learned to help people to experience the love of God, to, you know, to help people to open the heart to God. And then soon after that, uh, I had a chance to go to a mission field for a visit. And I went there, and then I tried to do what the pastor did, so I operate in spiritual gifts. So I helped those people to love God, to Think of God blessing them. Think of the Holy Spirit coming to bless them. To open the Spirit to God. And then cry out to God from the Spirit. And then these people experience the power of God. They experience the anointing of God and the joy of the Lord. And some people fell down by themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I noticed that when I love God, and I serve God, and I let the Holy Spirit work, and He will do wonderful things. 
And also, sometimes when I pray for people, I just say, Lord, you're so wonderful, thank you, I love you, and you're loving us. And then, evil spirit start to come out from the person. And some people say, are you driving out demons? I said, I guess I am, the evil spirit coming out. And they said, how come you're not saying, I cast you out in Jesus' name? I said, the evil spirit are coming out even when I'm loving Jesus, because Jesus' presence will drive out the spirit. The evil spirit. Now, I do say, drive out the, I cast out the evil spirit in Jesus' name. I do say that sometimes, but I don't have to say it all the time. And sometimes when I start praying for people, I didn't say anything about casting out the demons. I just said, Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. And then evil spirits start to manifest. And then I drive the demons from them. And then in the process, I, I don't drive out the demons all the way. I don't drive out from the beginning to the end. I help the person to love God, to submit to God, to let God be the Lord and obey God and love God and believe that God is loving them. And then uh, and the evil spirit will start, you know, continue to come out. When they love God, when they are filled with the love of God, when they really treasure God, God is so wonderful, hallelujah, God is so wonderful and the evil spirit will come out because the evil spirit cannot stand the strong presence of God. So everything, every time when we pray or serve, we want to draw the attention of people to God Himself. That's very important. We are leading people to God. We are not leading people to spiritual experiences. We are not leading people just to drive out the demons. We are leading people to God. And we're not leading people just to speak in tongues. We want to lead people to God. When they speak in tongues, we want to, them to think about God and love God. So when we're speaking in tongues, love God. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. And then as we serve God, we notice that we have certain gifts. Then we seek God's strategy. What does God want me to do? Does He want me to go to mission field? Does He want me to serve God in a certain way? Okay, and then so this is reserved for next time. Uh, it's time for today. So now I'm going to pray for you. And I hope you open your heart and say, God, you're so wonderful. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Please give us spiritual gifts. Please help us to serve you. But most importantly, most important that we build up the relationship with God. To believe that God loves us and we love God. Hallelujah. So close your eyes, stand up and relax yourself. Stand up. It's easier to feel the power of God when you stand up. And you feel the swaying of the body. When you stand up, you can feel the body swaying. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. You love us so much. You love us so much. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. You are loving God. You are kind God. You're a good God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We enjoy you. We love you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we hunger for you. We hunger for you more than we hunger for spiritual gifts. And spiritual gifts are for glorifying you and blessing people for serving God. Spiritual gifts are not for ourselves. It's for you and for people. Lord, help us to hunger for you that we want to glorify you and want to serve you and want to honor you, want people to know about you, want people to be attracted by you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you are wonderful God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us the joy of the Holy Spirit. Give us freedom of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give us freedom in the Lord Jesus so, so that we are all free, totally free. Oh, Lord Jesus, give us freedom and joy and strength and power Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Use our life mightily. Give us zeal and fire in the Lord that we hunger for you. We want to be used by you. Lord Jesus, we want to be used by you. We want to be, to be serving you and glorifying you all the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We thank you. We glorify you. We love you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's so wonderful to have you. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. Hallelujah. Change our life. Transform our life. Guide us, Lord. Use our life. 
help us to believe that every question is important, every single question is important. Even people who seem to be weak, you can use them greatly. You can give them spiritual gifts and they can do supernatural things. Lord, help us to trust in You. Help us to relax in You. Put down our burdens. Help us to enjoy You. We love You. We enjoy You. We hunger for You. We want You. We need You. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. We love You. We follow You. We honor You. Ha, 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 ha. Give us the joy of the Holy Spirit. Give us freedom, Lord Jesus. Give us freedom. Give us freedom and joy and strength and power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve you. We honor you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Oh, give us spiritual gifts according to your will. Change our life so that we are, attract, we are attracted by you, so that we are attracted to follow you and love you and obey you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you have experienced the Holy Spirit, you can tell your group leader and they can send me the messages, what you have experienced during the prayer. If you experience peace and comfort and burdens go away, you can tell your leader and encourage other people that most people experience peace and joy and burdens go away or love or comfort, transformation of the spiritual life. So you can uh, share with other people and write it down and pay attention that every time we pray, we enter the same relationship with God. Every time we pray, we can experience this peace and joy and, and patience and kindness again. Lord Jesus, help us to be sensitive to your presence. That every time we pray, we can come to this presence again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.